thank you for joining us in this, another one of the series called A Matter of Faith. In this particular program, we are fortunate to have a man who is a byword in the world of electronics, the world of communications. His name is Marshall McLuhan. He needs no one to introduce him. What I would like you to um, begin with is the world we're in just now. The world of yesterday was one world, but the world we're in today that we find ourselves, whether we're priests or nuns or uh, husbands or wives or uh, fathers or mothers or children, there's something different. Would you yeah. proceed to tell us? Well, the, the words that came to mind as you were saying these last bits is that we live in the world of the instant replay. Around the planet, all the events are not only being recorded, but replayed. And the amazing thing about the replay is that it offers the means of recog, recognition. The first time is cognition, the second time is recognition. And the recognition is even deeper. I think that perhaps what you are interested in with regard to the rosary has a lot to do with the replay. I would love you to develop that. Well, it, it, it comes to mind at once that uh, much, of the com much of the complaint about the rosary, uh, rosary is repetitive is precisely replay. And it is a perpetual deepening, not a superficial uh, treatment at all. But there is in the replay a deeper awareness of the, uh, uh, of the pattern and of the uh, uh, events that have taken place, the pattern of events, the process. And so replay offers a deeper level of awareness than the, the first play. And I think the rosary is a perpetual way of deepening our awareness, and the repetitions are really very close to the world of resonance, which is itself a world of profound involvement and of insight, and a feeling of at-homeness. But this is only uh, off the cuff apropos the world we live in today. We, yes. we live in an electric simultaneous world where most of the relationships between men are now invisible. The human bond, the electric instant bond around the planet is invisible, which is not unlike the things we're talking about in relation to the mystical body. Yes. Which is entirely around us and entirely invisible, or at least mostly invisible. But the, uh, we had, uh, you know, been uh, getting into some very large matters about the effects of this new environment, this new electric environment on man and his awareness of himself. I know, we were so deep that uh, I had to get well, you, like a, a little child, to get you to explain it to me more and more and more. And so I would love you now to proceed and to say, how is it and what is the cause of the darkness, the distress, the, the, that we are suffering uh, in a thousand different ways? How is it that that electronic age is contributing to that? How is it that the media is, is creating the climate for such a, a cloud to hang over us? Well, the a rapid change of environment exerts a sort of transforming, chain, all-changing power on the people who are subjected to this interface. And so for many people, the, the new electric surround uh, is a ripoff, which uh, destroys their image of themselves, their identities. All the familiar boundaries, all the familiar landmarks of their world have been eroded instantly by this electric and visible surround of information. All the institutions of our world have been given this kind of overall new treatment, a new environment of instant information. For example, we were talking about the telephone. Yes. When you go on the telephone, you are transformed. You become instantly available to your friend in Chicago, or he becomes here instantly to talk to us in Toronto. You can talk to Tokyo and to Chicago and to New York simultaneously. And this gives you a sort of dimension of an angel, an almost a, a preternatural being, a disembodied spirit. In the electric age, man becomes a kind of disembodied spirit. I don't think our institutions have any way of coping with this new dimension of man, the angelic, discarnate man of the electric age. 
who is always in the presence of all the other men in the world. Honestly, I, I was startled now as well as a few hours ago about a thing that we just took for granted. You dial a number and all of a sudden you're talking to somebody uh, a, a thousand miles away. But that you're present there. You were sent. You're People present. used to think it was the message that was sent, but in now it's the sender. Is that the medium is the message? Well, the, the medium, it's hard to know now where the medium begins, where it ends, because this tremendous electric surround of service environment, the satellites and the, uh, all the electric means, all of these are media. The media uh, have become a kind of all-encompassing, all-embracing uh, environment of uh, service. And man uh, is, uh, seems to be a very puny and uh, rather inadequate figure in this vast new ground of service. And how is it, what is the result or the effect of all that bombardment on him? Uh, and I'd love you also to explain what do you mean by interface? Yes, it's a term in chemistry in the new quantum mechanics. The, 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 the term interface implies a resonant interval in which there are no connections in matter as understood in the new physics. But there is a perpetual resonating interval between particles or among particles. And this resonance is the interface. And it is in this interval of resonance that the action takes place. It leads on to the most uh, basic uh, matters about our own world of the dropout. Because the dropout is a person who experiences the need uh, to set up more space between himself and things. He wants more room. He wants an interface. He wants a kind of resonant dialogue. He wants to rap, to chat and empathize with everybody about everything. And this it constitutes an interface of change. In dialogue, people undergo change. It isn't just the passing of gossip back and forth, but it's a kind of interrelating by which people feel they are changed, they are getting with it, they are getting involved, they are participating. All of these things, it seems to me, profoundly relate to the rosary and to the church and the mystical body, which is also amazingly instant, surround, interface, a source of change, renewal, and an endless source of nourishment to everybody. It's a beautiful mystery. And uh, that, um, to go back to um, the first things are the most basic thing for you or for me or for anyone, faith itself. Would you give us uh, um, well, the, a Saint Paul, uh, St. Paul's remark that faith comes by hearing would seem to have something to do with this resonance of the word the word, the divine word resonating in the human heart is a kind of interface which changes the human heart. Yes. And tunes it in a totally new way. And so the idea of resonance rather than logical connectedness or logical demonstration and a mere sequence of proofs one following another rigorously. The idea of resonance as simultaneous and total and all involving and demanding everything that we have, and in turn feeding us and feeding back to us everything we need. Would you uh, start over again regarding faith and resonance, that faith is all embracing? Your... I'd love you to develop that a little better and for us. Well, the idea of the visual world, uh, as compared with the world of resonance, yes. the visual world offers evidence of a very different kind that toward which you can feel an inclination of attention, you can have, you can focus your attention on it. We speak of having your conscious visual life focalized on or concentrated upon an object. This gives you a point of view. Now, you can have a point of view about anything you can see, but you cannot have a point of view about something you hear especially something you overhear. There's a mystery there that uh, we are much more powerfully involved in what we overhear than in what we hear. But in the world of resonance, man somehow or other becomes completely involved. 
He is not involved in the visual world as much because this offers a means of detachment. You can stand back, you can look at it from different distances, and so on. The world of resonance, it requires a complete involvement and consent on the part of the listener. However, we can switch off. Even to resonance, we can turn off. And many people, of course, have developed this power in the electric age. They are so embellished or so flooded with data, with information, that they tend uh, to protect themselves by switch off, just turning themselves off, yes. going numb, becoming sort of somnambulistic modules, and unaware really of themselves or the world they live in, not relating and so on. But that is only one facet of this business of resonance. Perhaps there are other ones we should keep in mind. 